You're about to travel to another dimension, a dimension of disbelief for eyes, ears, and mind. A journey through a terrifying land where apologists know no boundaries. Your next stop, the liberal zone. We've been talking a lot about the Supreme Court decision last week, the Whatcott decision, the one that tramples all over free speech, takes the charter and shreds it. Well, some people support free speech, then there's Warren Kinsella and a lot of other people in the liberal zone. Here's part of Warren's column, which you can find at lilyspad.ca. He says, hateful words always precede hateful deeds, but offensive speech isn't always criminal speech, which is why it was critically important as a society, we maintain a non-criminal legal tool to deal with the likes of Bill Watcott. Warren Kinsella joins us now from our Toronto studio to defend himself. Warren, why are you against the charter? Why are you against free speech? I'm for the charter. And no, you're fact, not. Yes, I am. And charter there's a says part of the free charter, speech. There's a part of the charter, yes, that's in section two, but you should read above it, section one, where it says, we're entitled to have reasonable limitations on the freedoms and the rights described therein. And that's what the Supreme Court did in the Watcott case. They said, yes, the Saskatchewan Human Rights Tribunal, the, the code provision, did offend the charter. However, they said that it was reasonable, a reasonable well, uh, um, thing in a fair, uh, free and democratic society. Section one is what I call the you can have your rights until we say you can't. And here's the problem. The Supreme Court, they get to decide. There's no clear test. They will claim that there is. And they'll po point to the Oaks test or this test or Big M, uh, all these different longstanding cases. But let me read you part of, this, uh, part of this ruling because I just found it incredible. They said, the legislative term hatred or hatred and contempt must be interpreted as being restricted to those extreme manifest manifestations of the emotion described by the words detestation and vilification. Well, fine, fair enough. But they also go on, Lorne, to say that even if the words are true, that doesn't matter. Even if you meant no harm, intent does not matter. And you don't have to cause actual harm. That's all in the decision written that the court unanimously agreed to. Where on earth does that make sense? Not in Canada. Well, I, I don't recall any part of the decision saying that, you know, hatred uh, is, um, that, that, that falsity, if, if, if you're making a statement that is, is hateful, it's inherently false. Right? No, the, the, the ruling well, actually give me an example. says that just, if it's true, Give me an example of something matter. that's hateful and true. Well, that is up there. This is part of the problem. It's up to the eye of the beholder. Well, that, exactly. And, we're, and, I mean, we're, and, and we, we don't know what free speech is and what free speech isn't anymore. Well, let me uh, ask we you. We have a court that says we will decide when you have it. George Jonas, I think, put it very well in the post. Uh, he was uh, doing a mock question and answer in a column there. And he said, well, well what's offensive speech? Well, I'll tell you when you've done it. Uh, yeah, but how you've is covered, let me, supposed let's, to know that? Let's talk about another George. You covered extensively George Galloway coming to Canada. I was one of those people because of his anti-Israeli and, in fact, in many cases, anti-Jewish statements. I supported the decision of the government to seek to bar him from Canada. How did you feel about that? Well, one, he wasn't actually barred from Canada because they, it was Eventually. just an opinion that he might not be allowed in, and he never tried to come in. Secondly, he would have been inadmissible for the uh, reason that he gave 25,000 pounds to Hamas, a banned terrorist group. He claims he never did, but he's on tape bragging about it and saying, come and arrest me. But so how do you feel it, about it, that? It's not a free speech my, issue my in that is, point. My point is, with this stuff, he, no, you're you, drawing you were, a, you're no, drawing you were attacking comparison. subjectivity before, so I'm asking you for your subjective point of view. All of us have points of view on this stuff. I mean, I got some examples of things that you can readily get on the, the internet right now. So here's Around Blacks, Never Relax. Here's another one, With Jews You Lose. This is stuff from the White Aryan Resistance, members of whom have been active in Canada, members of whom have tried to get into Canada, and the government of Brian Moroni, to their great credit, barred them. Well, that, I'm fine with barring people. Hold on. We're applying I'm, subjective uh, judgments, and I think we're entitled to do that. I'm fine with barring people from coming in. Well, there you go. That, that's, that's not the same as free speech. We're talking well, sure about citizens of Canada are allowed certain rights. The Supreme Court shredded the charter when it said, even if what you say is true, 
It no. does not matter. As I say, I... And, I, and, and let me ask you this. You'd have to point to that section of the judgment, because I don't recall it saying anywhere that truth oh, it's does not very easy to matter. find in the judgment. Very easy to find. I quoted it at length in my column last week. Even if it is true, the truth can be used for nefarious purposes. Rothstein is out to lunch. So are the rest of the judges that agreed to this. I, I, I can't believe that they did. Look, let, let me read you something that you wrote recently. Uh, and this is from a column where you were talking about how great Justin Trudeau was. You said, if asking J Jason Kenney, uh, asking if Jason Kenney fears Justin Trudeau is rhetorical. Uh, on the day these two face off, the smart money is on the telegenic Montreal boxer whipping the floor, wiping the floor with the plump 40-something uh, virgin from Calgary. Are you opening Jason Kenney? Those are hateful words. Uh, should we be prosecuting you? No, I thought they were, they were, uh, it was a point of view that I was entitled to make. And our editors, you know, both of us have the same editors, if they felt it was hateful or inappropriate, they wouldn't have put it in the paper. And it was subjected to libel review as well. Judgments, we apply judgments to statements all the time. There is no objective standard. And so some of the stuff I just showed you, this kind of stuff, is stuff that we've said as a society, this is not an idea. This does not add meaningfully to our society or improve our so, society. And we're entitled to make those judgments, and we should. Okay, well, think about this. Bill Watcott was speaking out against homosexuality. If these laws had been around when people were trying to say, let's, uh, let's bring homosexuality out of the closet, let's stop oppressing people, and they'd been used to say, no, no, you can't say that. You can't say homosexuality is normal. You can't say it's fine. Would you have supported that? Because the same test would be going on with society saying, well, there's just some things we can't say. In the Watcott case, though, he won some of the, the appeal that he made to the Supreme Court of Canada. He won. There was a section of the Saskatchewan Human Rights Code that talked about what guys like you often talk about, which is hurt feelings and so on. They agreed with you. The Supreme Court agreed with you and said, and then, that's going too far. And but then the turned around and said, just let me, I'm trying to answer your matter. question. Let me answer your question. But they were saying there are things that he also did that were demonstrably, improvably, and manifestly hate and that we as a society reject that and we why, don't think that's appropriate. Why not just use sunlight and argue with him and defeat his points. Are you afraid well, that how about Westboro, Bill Whatcott? Westboro Baptist Church. You know, uh, they come. Why, why didn't we let them come into the country and but protest at the funeral of the young of man who was killed on the, the gray, that Greyhound bus? He you keep using beheaded on the people Greyhound bus. outside the country. They I'm talking wanted to Canadian come. citizens. But Brian, you can't pick and choose. That's what I'm yes, saying. Yes, you can. To you. Citizen Romanus. It means something. It means something to be a Canadian citizen and to have the Supreme Court strip away those rights in the way that they did. This is a judgment that should be denounced from the rooftops by so you're everyone. Saying, you're saying it was appropriate to bar the Westboro Baptist Church people from coming here, and they have supporters in Canada, to exercise free speech. Is that right? No. No, we, we can decide who we let in and why we let people in. That's why we have borders. Otherwise, we just go like uh, with, with, with those uh, no one is illegal folks, declare it all Turtle Island and say there's no borders. But can you there keep be, using examples there from outside. Stronger... Let's talk about people inside the country. No, and, I wanna, and you're afraid uh, but... of debating Bill Watcott and being able to defeat his arguments. So we use punitive measures so like a $17,000 fine. So citizenship determines freedom of speech? Uh, is citizen, that right? The, so the charter we, is there for citizens care. of Canada. But, I mean, you know, look at Galloway. Galloway is a member of the Commonwealth. He was a member of the British Parliament. And he was not kept out for free speech Ultimately, reasons. he was allowed in. But in the early days, many people on the right said, and I was one of the people on the left who agreed with them, we don't need this guy here. It is appropriate. And I disagree with you on that. I said keep him out because he funds terrorists. He's a terrorist supporter that gives well, money to Hamas. He would say that That's that different. was exercising his free speech. Well, funding a terrorist group is not free speech. Warren, we'll have to leave it there, but uh, we'll chat again soon on I, Spar on this, I'm sure. Thank you. All right, share your thoughts on Facebook. Which one do you agree with, Warren or me? Let us know. Stick around, we've got more to come.